Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. You know, I was broke man trying to start a business. Needed a cheap vehicle. That's what he sells. A single father is now without the means to take care of his children after he says he was taken advantage of by a local car dealer. Thanks for joining us tonight. Mike has the evening off. The man was blowing the whistle and he called us tonight from Catalyst. He's blowing it on Catalyst Motors after he says they took his truck from him, a truck that has his name on the title. Valley News Team's Brad Proderick investigated and found out this is hardly an isolated incident with the business. Last July, I went down to Affordable Auto to buy a pickup to start my business. I saw a cheap vehicle and I went with it. It was a, a Dodge Dakota, a 92 Dodge Dakota. James Morissette needed a work vehicle to haul his tools around. He says he went to AA Affordable Auto, now Catalyst Motors, to buy a truck. The dealership didn't have the title, but said they were working on getting it. The Dakota soon had problems, so the dealership agreed to trade up to a Ford F-150. But that's when things went south. I guess he took it upon himself to take my truck to get me to move faster on the title. That's out of my control. Morissette says Catalyst Motors towed the F-150 back to their lot in the middle of the night last Friday. The reason? They say they didn't get the title back to the first truck, the 92 Dakota. The title they said they didn't have to give him in the first place. The F-150 now sits on Catalyst's lot. The same truck that Morissette has a clear title to showing it belongs to him. I tried reaching out to the owner of Catalyst Motors, Thomas Hughes Peterson, to see why he felt he could tow someone's truck away. The only answer I got? Please try again later. Goodbye. And I tried the door at their business. It's locked with a sign that reads, sorry, we are closed. Well, we received about 11 complaints over the last three years against AA Affordable Auto. And of those 11 complaints, all 11 went unanswered. Hendrickson says the Better Business Bureau has talked with Hughes Peterson on several occasions. And he could care less about the complaints against him. You know, the bottom line is uh, we're not an enforcement agency. We can't make people respond. We can't make business owners respond. But again, the vast majority do respond when there is a problem and they want to work with their customers to get it figured out. For Morissette, his advice to others looking for a cheap vehicle in the FM area? You might get taken down there. That's all I can say is uh, go to somebody that's licensed, respectable. You might have better luck. In Fargo, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Now, Catalyst Motors has an F rating with the Better Business Bureau. James Morissette says he plans to take Catalyst Motors to small claims court and will file the paperwork in the next few days. Well, the Better Business Bureau gave us some advice on how you can make sure that you aren't getting a bad deal when you use car shopping. Head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and then click on this story. And James called us to investigate this car, deal car dealership. If you need help uncovering any fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576, and a member of our investigative team will get on the case. Well, it's been cloudy out there today. It still is. And now I'm hearing murmurs there might be snow in the forecast. Let's talk to Hutch to see what's going on. Hutch? Well, for some, we woke up with snow on the ground this morning after a pretty uh, unsettled start to our day. But the temperatures did warm up for most of us. We're in the 40s in Fargo as we look in the northern plains. The yellows you see there through Nebraska and southwest Minnesota some 50 to 60 degree readings there. Here's a look at the radar. The shower activity is moving off to the east. We'll actually enjoy a little bit of clearing as we go through the early evening hours and we're going to enjoy a beautiful celestial event starting tomorrow at 545. That's the beginning of spring. That's central time, but it will not be very spring like as you mentioned. For some, we start spring with a little snow and we could have one of our most potent snow uh -oh. systems making its way into our forecast area later next week. All details mm. on that as well. In March. In March. All right, thanks, Hutch. Yes. Authorities now say the death of a northwestern Minnesota man is murder. Today, 64-year-old Ronald Foss was identified as the victim, and Foss's body was found in his rural Viking home by his DigiKey co-workers earlier this week. Viking is about 18 miles northwest of Thief River Falls. Authorities say that Foss died of homicidal violence but they're not releasing many more details than that. You've said uh, there were chairs knocked over and blood at the scene in the, inside the house. Did it appear there was a fight? At this time, I can't say that it was a fight. I don't, I don't know for sure. We should know more information in the near future here, though. Did you guys recover any type of weapon, to, including a club or anything like that? Not that I am aware of, no. 
The sheriff says a big key to this case is finding this, Foss's missing pickup. It's a 1998 Chevy extended cab similar to this one with Minnesota license plates, 742HLK. He says so far they don't have any leads, but if you have any information regarding the case, contact police immediately. Were you a victim of the 2013 Target data breach? If so, some good news for you. Target says it will pay $10 million to victims settling this, the class action lawsuit. Each victim is going to be eligible for up to $10,000. Victims must be able to state they experienced at least one of the following. Here they are. Unauthorized, unreimbursed charges on their credit or their debit card. Time spent addressing those charges. Fees to hire someone to correct their credit report. Higher interest rates or fees on the accounts. Credit related costs or costs to replace their identification, social security number, or phone number. Terms of the settlement were reached and agreed upon March 9th, but must still be approved by a federal judge. As many as 70 million customers had their personal information hacked in this breach. Another 40 million may have also had credit or debit information stolen. Just last week, the man accused of killing a Ponsford, Minnesota fan woman was sentenced to 30 years in prison for her murder. Now, the woman's family is now standing up in her honor. As John Croman shows us, they're calling for more services for victims of domestic violence. Action Day to End Violence Against Women took on a distinctly Native American tone this year, and there's a reason for that. Those who gathered here were told that Native American women are three times more likely to be victims of domestic abuse. And I tried to talk her into leaving and she wouldn't leave. Kyleen Weiss traveled 230 miles to honor her daughter Shalonda Sue Clark, who died in 2013 when her boyfriend set their home on fire in Becker County. Now Kyleen is raising Shalonda's four children. She was so much in love with them that I guess she thought she could change them. We are strong. We are worthy and we are mighty. Among those who led the rally, Minnesota Vikings tackle Matt Khalil. I was raised on great morals and that was to never mistreat, um, harm or disrespect women in any way. The objective, a $10 million boost in spending for support services. And besides just responding to those who are experiencing violence, we also want to be able to have the ability to start doing prevention work. $10 million in a $40 billion budget doesn't sound like a lot, but it can make a huge difference in the lives of women, and that's why people came to the Capitol to rally today. In St. Paul, John Croman, CARE 11 News. Now, if you find yourself a victim of domestic violence, get help before it's too late. Here's the number for the Domestic Violence Hotline. The number's on your screen, 1-800-799-7233. Some students are getting some real-world experience before they even graduate high school. Today was the official opening of The Nest. It's Davies High School student-run cafe. It's run by upperclassmen in family and consumer science restaurant skills courses. Now, they have drafted business plans, created weekly menus, ordered supplies, and prepared the food. Looks good. The Nest will operate from 10.40 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Thursday and Friday during lunch, now through May 21st. The cafe will take online orders as well, beginning next week. To view this week's menu, we have a link for you on valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. And don't forget to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow all the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Well, later on Valley News Live at 6, we'll show you what the Moorhead Ice Show is all about this weekend. And a little bit of snow across the valley. For some, we started the day with quite a little bit of snow. We still haven't hit 16 inches in Fargo, although we'll have a chance at some spring snow. I'll have details on that coming up in a few moments.